Welcome back. So, in our last lecture, we used Lenz's and Faraday's law to see that a changing magnetic field can create an electric current. Faraday's law told us the magnitude of the voltage, and it depended on the change in the magnetic flux with time. Lenz's law helped us use the right-hand rule to figure out the direction that the current in the uh, coil would go. So, uh, one of the examples that uh, came out of the last lecture was the electric generator. If we have a change in mag magnetic flux through a co uh, wire, um, so that will produce a electric voltage. So we can attach a magnet to a wheel and spin it, say, between two coils, or have it near a coil of wire, and this will cause a change in flux, and that induces an electric current. So we can turn a source of mechanical energy into electrical energy by inducing a current. Another example of an application of the interaction between a current and a magnetic field is the electric motor. So in this case, uh, we have a loop of wire, as is shown here, uh, and it has a current going through it. And we have placed the loop into a uniform magnetic field. By doing this, uh, we can use the right-hand rule to figure out the direction of the force on the wire. In the picture shown here, the uh, current is looping around uh, clockwise, around the loop, and uh, it is in a uniform magnetic field that is pointing down. So if we look at the uh, current at the top of the loop, the current is going to the right, and the magnetic field is pointing down. So we use our uh, right-hand rule to find the direction of the force, which is uh, into the page. So now we look at the bottom part of the loop. Uh, there, the current is going to the left. The magnetic field is pointing down. So there, the uh, force is uh, pointing out of the page. So the top of the loop is going into the page, and the bottom of the loop is coming out of the page. That means that the loop wants to turn. So to make this work, uh, once the loop has uh, done a half turn, the current is switched, so the uh, current is still going clockwise through the loop. Originally, I think this was done with a metal brush, so uh, the idea is that the polarity just switched as the uh, loop turned around and around. An another way that you can uh, think of this is that the uh, loop is an electromagnet, and our north magnetic pole is pointing into the page, and the south magnetic pole is pointing out of the page. So the electromagnet wants to uh, turn so the north pole faces south uh, uh, faces the south pole of the permanent magnet. However, the uh, moment it gets there, we switch the current, and then now the uh, north pole and south pole flip. So it keeps turning, uh, sort of forever trying to bring the north magnetic pole of the electromagnet to the south pole of the permanent magnet, but it keeps switching before it can get there. In any case, this allows for an electric current and a magnet to be turned into a working motor. We turn our current into uh, mechanical energy. The, uh, this is sort of the reverse of the generator that we uh, talked about in the last lecture. Our next application is uh, what happens when a conductor is moved through a magnetic field. Here we are pushing a metal bar to the right through a magnetic field that is pointing into the page. So the uh, bar is lying uh, flat on the page. So we use our uh, first right-hand rule here. The uh, charge is moving to the right. The magnetic field is pointing into the page. So the force on a positive charge will point up. If the force on a positive charge points up, then the force on a negative charge will feel a force that points down. So as the uh, conductor moves to the right, there will be a charge separation where uh, the positive charges move up and the negative charges move down. So essentially, your electrons will then move to the bottom of your conductor. So then we can find the uh, voltage across the metal bar, which is equal to the magnetic field strength times the velocity times the length of the bar. So that means uh, we can create a, a voltage across this bar by moving it through a magnetic field. Notice this is not a current. It's more like a c capacitor, I guess. So uh, we have uh, separated and stored charge on the bar. And then when we uh, stop it moving, the charge will be restored back to its uh, neutral across the metal bar and so there will be a brief current at when it uh, stops moving. Another example of a use for this is a railgun. In this case, we have a uh, conducting uh, projectile that connects to uh, wires, uh, but the projectile can move. So when we do this, the current uh, through the wire produces a magnetic field. Uh, notice, the, uh, using the second, uh, second right-hand rule, the magnetic field is pointing up for both of the wires uh, in the center between the two wires. So the uh, current here is uh, pointing uh, to the right. So we're looking at the part of the current that is going through the projectile. And so uh, that part of the uh, current is uh, pointing to the right. The magnetic field is pointing up. So that means that the force is pointing uh, uh, out of the page. So if we uh, really crank up the current and produce a massive current, 
uh, you can use this to accelerate your projectile very rapidly out of the page. This does require that the projectile be a conductor, and then you can convert a very uh, large current into a rapid acceleration of a particle. I think the US Navy has put a good bit of effort into producing these rail guns, and they've been, I think they've mostly been developed for anti-aircraft guns, although at least as far as I know, they're still mostly in the sort of prototype uh, phase. Another similar thing to this is the uh, rail gun. Uh, similar to the rail gun is a coil gun. So in this case, uh, we pump a current through a coil wrapped around a piece of iron, and uh, this induces a large magnetic field. The changing magnetic field induces a current through the uh, piece of metal loop around the magnet, and this causes the uh, metal loop to accelerate. I usually go through this because we do have a nice demo for it, although uh, uh, it's also valuable because it does kind of show how lenses laws work. So uh, basically by pumping a magnetic field up through the coil, it induces a uh, current that uh, produces a magnetic field that is pointing down in the opposite direction. That means the north pole of the electromagnet and the north pole of the induced magnet are facing each other, so that results in the uh, metal coil uh, accelerating pretty rapidly. So uh, I guess I should point out here then that this works for uh, anything that is conducting, so aluminum or, or uh, any uh, conducting metal, uh, this will work, uh, and then it's because it's a uh, induced uh, magnetic uh, field. Okay, so you have a, a question to do here, and then next we're gonna take a look at transformers. Good luck.